Hello again, and I'm back with another video on these train sim modules. Thanks for all the interest that I've had in these. I really didn't expect any interest, but apparently the video is getting good views now. So uh, thanks very much for that, and thanks for the comments. Um, I thought people might like more of a look at these. So first thing I'm going to do, let's tear them apart and show you the insides, as much as you can see anyway, because the other two modules at least are pretty chocker in there. It's really hard to see, but I'll show you what I can. So I have the tools to take them apart to get the um, the tops off. It's just this tool here, and I'll take these two apart, the two lever modules first, and then we'll have a look at the other two afterwards. I'm sure most people just want to see these. So let's get the top off here. This only has two screws in it still at the moment because they're still sort of in development. Oh, and the camera's kind of in the way. I've tried to get this. Uh, view as decent as possible um, there is still this is on an arm so it still kind of gets in the way so those two screws removed we will remove the knob and first thing is this part here this is 3d printed this is 3d printed with the same thread which I believe is an M10 and I've put a uh, an M3 bolt down the middle for strength and it's just screwed in here into the plastic in fact, here's the um, here's the other one I haven't fitted yet to this side or one of them anyway. Um, that's what's inside, and the 3D printer, the A1 Mini, does the thread extremely well. So once that's off, we can get that off. And by the way, the actual uh, stickers here, the labels, these are just printable, laser printable um, silver paper with clear vinyl stuck over the top because the print was coming off otherwise. Right, with that down there, you can see inside. And fairly basic in here, we have the, let's actually get the, um, get the notch plate off. This is just held on with two screws. This comes out. And then there's nothing supporting this, so it falls down. And that is the notch plate. I'll just show you the inside of that. So you have the notches on one side, and then it's just filled in here. Two little dimples to locate, and then the screw holes. And I have that marked as seven with a detent of five millimeter. So the, uh, these are five millimeter semicircles, essentially. And um, the, that's also the uh, filleting on here is three millimeters. That's all done in fusion. So I have a few different experimental types. And then we have the pretty much the bare construction here. So that's the main part of the lever, which is a 10 millimeter rod going that way. This is a 10 millimeter outer diameter stainless rod. Uh, I think it's eight millimeter in internal diameter. In fact, let's just do the measurement on camera. Excuse me. We will just do the measurement right here. Yes, eight millimeter. Whoops, eight millimeter internal diameter. That's staying in there. And this piece is all one piece printed to support this, with a set screw in the back. And this runs up into the uh, into the part quite a long way. Uh, that also has a bolt in very similar to this, just to add some strength because um, 3D printed parts in PETG especially can be a little flexible. Then in here we have the little spring. This is just a another M3 bolt or piece of threaded rod uh, with a couple of washers to uh, uh, set the tension. This is the spring from a clothes peg. Um, yeah, just happened to be the right thing. And a little dome capped nut on the top. Really basic. And this is just 3D printed to fit just sits in there and it just provides tension. A ball bearing and a uh, spring will be better. But I don't have that yet, so this is what we have. Yeah, so 10mm rod across there, it goes through the centre of this. It's pinned at the bottom down here, again by another set screw. And that just goes through the plastic and into a hole that's drilled into the uh, tube. And then that goes into the centre of a piece that I actually can't show you unfortunately, but it's a um, piece that goes down there and then it's uh, hollowed and splined to fit onto the potentiometer at 
this end and the potentiometer is then attached to the vera board underneath. Uh, bearing blocks are set for 10 millimeter. They are fairly cheap Amazon um, bearing blocks. So the first one, the first one I did in this, I did this second, this one first, the sizing was wrong. It, it actually wasn't 10 millimeter. I had to um, sand down the tube to get it to fit through the bearing block, which wasn't fun, not fun at all. And then this second one, it just worked. And you can see they're a fairly rough casting. It really is quite a cheap build, this, assuming you have the 3D printer. And they're bolted. Let's see if that part comes out. They're bolted underneath. So four to hold that. These two hold the, the blocks for the um, notch. And to actually drill the holes, I use these two positions for locating, which on this particular one, or the existing little standoffs here, I just drill through those and use those as locating positions uh, so I could drill accurately on both of them. Let's get a view from that angle there. These are actually s pinching onto the tube. The whole tube inside moves and that's what rotates the potentiometer on that end. These blocks here are also 3D printed obviously and they match up to the notches and that was done based on the height of this so you could adjust these if you needed to in here we have the heat inserts which are um, done with a soldering iron something you have to be careful of with these apart from being really hot and I burnt my finger the first time is um, they can easily be out of alignment so when you actually do this you need to put things together while it's still kind of um, in a slightly molten state with the plastic because um, it'll move and that's that. Once you tighten things together and the alignment's okay, it'll set and it'll be fine. Um, USB on the back uh, is USB-B. I find that's the most robust USB, um, unlike USB mini. This is a Pro Micro Arduino, Arduino clone, and mounted on its side, um, you can get a, a view of the, uh, the angle it's in at uh, with the analog pins down. And that's just mounted into here in a little case which is just there just to keep it in place and it's using the existing standoffs here. Uh, the cable goes all the way around and then comes out to here which gives it a bit of um, strain relief because these are quite weak, these micro USBs. Then we have the remaining connections from the uh, push wheel, uh, the um, click wheel which uses a uh, like a Wago terminal, knockoff Wago terminal just to connect grounds. We have the button on this side, which um, I had to put some hot glue on because the connections kept coming off. These are really thin wires that already have the um, little DuPont style connectors already on them, and um, they can break really easily there, especially when they're soldered. And the same down on the three and a half mil connector. This is a thonk. 3.5mm connector, originally made for synthesizers. I um, I have had a couple left over because I built one of the Look Mum No Computer um, little mini synths and I had them from that. And that's kind of it really. Um, it, it's fairly simple in there. Let's get the top off this second one and I'll show you that it's basically the same inside. Get rid of some stuff out of the way. This is what the Arduino looks like by the way, the Pro Micro. This is a dead one. Oh and of course the light is there as well, the front light, which has two connections and a ground. The light has two connections and a ground there and that's um, red and blue with the corresponding connectors. So get this one off. And we're almost hitting 10 minutes on the video already. I wasn't expecting that. Same again. Let's get this off. And we have the 
5D52 in here, which is five notches, five millimeter detent, and two millimeter radius. I've experimented with those, it really doesn't make much of a difference. Let me get these off again, and I'll just show you that everything's the same inside. There we go. Identical inside, other than the button being on this side. And because the button's on this side, the original connectors were too short, so I had to make a little link there so it wasn't stretched, and obviously it can't cr cross over this path here. Otherwise, same again. These were cut from lengths that I got from Amazon. They were cut on my little porter band, which I've got some videos on back on my channel from quite a while ago. No problem cutting stainless. And there we go again. Exactly the same. Nothing more I can comment on with this one. Um, you may notice uh, they, they are the same on this one. One of the wires, the purple and white wires, is different because I soldered it wrong anyway. Right, um, I'm going to get the other two now. I'll put these back together and get the other two. Right, so I'm going to put these back together and I'll get the other two modules down and we'll take those apart and show you what's inside there.